So let's begin by talking about what union find does. Imagine if you had some objects and you want to group them together according to some criteria. So one such grouping might be this. Now, once you have completed the grouping, you would want to know certain properties about the groups, such as how many groups there are, and if two objects belong to the same group. The union find data structure, as its name suggests, supports two operations. The first one is called union, which takes as input two elements, x and y, from the set of objects, and it joins or unions the groups containing x and y. For example, we can start with 0 and 2 belonging to the same group, and 1 and 3 belong to the same group. And when we call this function union01, it joins or unions the groups containing 0 and 1. So the final result would be all four objects belonging to the same group. The next operation is called find, and it takes a single object x as the input and returns the group that x belongs to. So now let's see how we can implement union find. We will first walk through the ideas and discuss the code at the end. Union find is useful in graph type problems. So our first step will be to cast the grouping in the form of a graph. And the way we do that is to connect all the objects that belong to the same group with an edge like so. Now, remember we need to find a way to determine which group each element is in. To do so, we designate a representative element for each group. This element will represent the entire group it belongs to in the sense that the find function will always return the representative. For example, when we call find a 4, the representative of the group that 4 belongs to is 0, so therefore we return 0. And of course, the representative will return itself. As another example, when we call find of 2, we return the representative of the group 2 belongs to, which is 5. Notice that two elements belong to the same group if and only if they have the same representative. So the representative provides a way of checking if two elements belong to the same group. So now we need to implement the other function, which allows the union of two groups. And to do that, let me rearrange this graph in a suggestive way. I've now put the representatives at the top and the rest of the elements of the group towards the bottom. Now, each group is represented as a tree, with the root being the representative. With this, we can introduce the notion of parents and children. For any given element, how do we find the representative? Well, we must travel upwards the tree towards the root. In other words, we need to keep traveling towards the parent until we reach the top. As an example, suppose we want find a 4. The parent of 4 is 3, so we travel upwards to 3, and the parent of 3 is 0, so we travel up to 0. And we would know when to stop if we just use the simple convention that the parent of a root is itself. So if we can keep track of the parent of every object, then we can very easily travel upwards the tree towards the root. So what about the union operation? Well, in this new interpretation, the representatives are the roots of the trees. So if we want to union two trees, we can just set the root of one tree to be the child of another. For example, suppose we want to union 1 and 2. 5 is the root of 2, which we can get by calling find of 2. And similarly, 0 is the root of 1. We then set the parent of 5 to be 0. And what this does is that it sets 5, which used to be a root, now as a child of 0. And all of the elements that used to be in the tree rooted at 5 now have a root of 0. And now these two trees have been unioned. Now we have the basic idea, let's discuss how we can implement this in code. We initialize this array called parent, where parent of i gives the parent of the object i. Initially, each element is their own individual group, so we initialize the array with parent of i equals i. Next, we implement this function find of x, which finds the root of the tree that contains x. So first, if the parent of x is not itself, then we know that we have not yet reached the root of the tree. So we travel upwards the tree by one step by calling the find function recursively on the parent of x. Otherwise, we know that we have reached the root of the tree, so therefore we just return x. And finally, we define the union function, which joins the trees containing x and y. So as we've seen before, we first need to find the root of y and the root of x, and we then set the parent of one to be the other. 
So that is the algorithm, and now let's discuss the complexity of this algorithm. If the data structure contains n elements, then on average, the height of the trees will be on the order of log of n. Since both the find and union operations involve traversing up the trees at most two times, the time complexity of both functions is O of log of n. The space complexity will be O of n owing to the parent array, which will have length n. All right, I hope this video gave you a better understanding of the union find data structure and algorithm and helped you prepare for your interviews. If you liked the video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. That's all I have for you today. I'll see you guys next time.